Welcome to One Way to Machines and the B7 Audi RS4 series. In today's video, we'll be covering air filter choices and air filter replacement for the B7 RS4. On the right, we have a K&N filter. This filter came with the car when it was purchased used. Nothing has been done to it since the day that it was changed to an AEM dry flow filter. And if you look here, there is some oil residue still around it. Maybe the person before did not oil it properly. The filter was quite dirty, but these are washable filters. The only thing about K&N filters is that it's recommended by the company that you oil them. Oiling has its own benefits, but in mostly a road use car, it's not that important. Although this K&N filter that was on the car when it was purchased was quite dirty, the car ran perfectly fine and didn't have any misfire codes. The filter can be washed. The only reason that this filter was replaced with a filter that is designed to be used dry is that high performance cars like this have generally very sensitive MAF sensors. A lot of cars do. The oil can get onto the MAF sensor and cause problems that may be hard to track sometimes. So, and as you can see, it's possible that somebody oiled this poorly. There was oil all around the seams. It's just something that's not worth taking the headache for on a road car in my opinion. There might be people that have used these K&N filters for years and years, oiled them and had no problems. To take the safer route though, the AEM dry air filter, a lot of people use this with no problems. The AEM dry filter can also be washed. Just wash it with a garden hose, no pressure, and leave it to air dry, no air compressors. You don't want any of the material to tear. The K&N is just as durable, but the fact that this is designed to be used without oil is just one less thing to worry about if the oil were to get on the MAF sensor. Now, this particular RS4 uh, sees northern cold climates and this car also goes Arizona, Southern California, dry desert temperatures where there's a lot of blowing dust and you would be very surprised at some areas in Southern California how much blowing dust there really is. And these filters perform perfectly fine this summer when the car went down there. The car will be going back down there this year. So we will continue to, to use this filter, but it was performing just fine in those conditions. Here's the part number for those of you that may want to purchase this filter. Another choice of filter that you have is the OEM paper filters. Those filters are not as durable as these and they have a groove that sits a little bit higher. So you have to make sure you put them back in the correct orientation when you go to reinstall. The one drawback of the paper filters is that if there's an inexperienced tech working on your car, they do have a higher chance of tearing the material when they go to reinstall it. Other than that, these filters do most likely have a bit more airflow. Don't quote me on that, I'm not sure. But these are just more readily available to purchase online than the OEM ones. And you're not going to run into knockoffs, people trying to sell knockoffs online. So the AEM one is fine. Again, the K&N, I don't have much experience with it, but I do have experience with oil getting on MAF sensors, so that's just a risk that I choose not to take. So as you can see, the hood strut failed today when I went to open the hood, and we have come up with a solution which is temporary. It's very common for people to use a longer piece of 2x4 going from here to here. The reason I don't like that is that it usually contacts the actual paint surfaces or more delicate objects on the inside here. And it gets in your way of working on the car if you do need to work on it before your replacement hood strut comes in. So this solution here allows us to continue to working on the car while still being a safe alternative. So what we've rigged up here is a piece of 2x4 which is about 15 inches long, 14 to 15 inches long. This 2x4 I actually used to store valves on other engine builds so it's all I had here. And we put a microfiber cloth on the top to protect the fireproof cover inside of the hood. This falls on your engine in the case that it were to catch fire. And the 2x4 will make contact with that and try to tear it. 
So just a slight bit, something like a microfiber, it's folded over twice. This is going to reduce the amount of contact the wood actually makes into it so that it doesn't tear it. If you put something much more smooth in here, it's only going to slide and the hood's going to fall on you. So don't try to put anything too soft, but also don't go with the bare 2x4 as well. On the bottom, we have put a piece of foam. This is going to protect the weather stripping underneath. And also the wood is leaning a bit on the actual hood strut, but this hood strut is junk, so that's not really important. But this is a decent um, solution that will keep your hood at its maximum lifting capacity that it would have had with its hood strut. And it's safe to work on temporarily, but do get your hood strut swapped out as soon as you can. Remove two Phillips screws holding on air snorkel. Store your nuts and bolts in a small container on a surface away from the car because if you keep these screws too close to the car you could drop them in the motor and lose them. Gently pull up on snorkel. You can either split it in half or take it all out as one piece. Whatever works easier for you. Remove airline by squeezing on tabs, pushing in just a slight bit and pulling out. In order to avoid breaking things at this step, it's good to use both hands, one to do the squeezing motions and the back and forth at the front slightly, and then put your other hand on the 90 degree arm and use the force from there to actually pull it out to prevent any wrestling or breaking of tabs. Release the MAF sensor clip Remove EVAP purge valve in line. When you remove this line, you're not removing the actual line from anything. You're removing the plastic bracket from another plastic or metal bracket that is attached to the actual air box. Loosen one, two Phillips screws from the air box housing. These screws are just going to be loosened out to a certain point. You're not going to remove them fully. Unclip this line from the metal tab bracket. Just pull it out using both hands, one on this side, one on this side. And gently lift the metal tab and just pull it out and leave it there. The metal bracket for this line is much harder than the line obviously. So when you're taking it out, try to put your finger underneath the flexible part a little bit to ease the motion of the line coming out so that you don't cause too much friction and possible damage on the outside material. Loosen hose clamp on flex tube. Using both hands, Gently remove the flex tube from the air box, not to tear the flex tube. Remove air box assembly from engine bay. Minding this line as the metal bracket may try to snag on it. Place the line underneath the metal bracket. Tuck your MAF sensor out of the way. Just by the throttle body there, it usually stays. and mine this vacuum line as well and take it out. Also this clip here, you want to make sure that this is set back so it doesn't snag as well. The place that I've put this here is just so that it can be in the shot. This is not a good place to store your air box as it has the sensitive MAF sensor inside. I just wanted to pause it here to point that out and also sometimes when people are doing this project a common mistake that is made is the air filter may take some time to come in the mail say you opened it up you checked it okay it's dirty it's an old one stock one I want to replace it and now you're gonna wait for the new one to come in a lot of people are not going to want to put these things back in their place because it's a lot of work so they might just stuff a rag in here and then wait until they get their part in the mail the issue that arises with this and this has happened before is people will leave a towel inside of here or something else and then the throttle body will suck it in most of the time it gets stuck in the throttle body but the car will throw a code and it'll go into limp mode you don't want to do this in the case that you use something else in a horrible case scenario it could go into your engine so something as simple as changing your air filter 
can trash your engine. Not to scare you from doing this job, just if you're going to take a break, make sure to either put everything back or use tuck tape on the outside of the snorkel tube because that's something that's visible. And believe it or not, even the most focused of you, if you put a rag inside of there, this tube is facing downwards. And on a lot of cars, this is the case. And you will, it'll skip your mind two weeks later when you come back and your part is in the mail. So don't use a rag, either use tape or put this back in if you're waiting for your parts in the mail. For those of you who aren't too familiar with German cars, things that I want to point out on removing this box here is this mechanism here allows you to slide it out, okay? And the screws that go here, you don't take them fully out. They're going to come out with the housing, but inside of the plastic here, there are metal inserts. So you don't have to be extremely scared about possibly cross-threading these or I mean, you could cross thread them, but it's a metal to metal insert. It's not metal to plastic. So you don't need to be that concerned about it. The AEM dry filter on this car is in perfect condition. We're not going to replace it or anything. I will remove it so that we can see its condition. It is time for me to give it a check as well, but we'll be using the same filter. Once you've got the old filter removed, Check the box inside for debris. Most likely, if you purchase the car used, you might find a bunch of stuff in there. But this one isn't too bad. There's just a little bit of grime on the bottom, so I'm not going to bother vacuuming it. But a vacuum cleaner is usually the best thing there. And then if you just use a spray bottle with alcohol and a microfiber, you can get it perfectly clean inside there. So now I've got the AEM dry filter and the K&N side by side. Honestly, in terms of build quality, they seem like they're exactly the same. Neither one has any kind of a cheaper membrane around it. The K&N one, like I said, it came with the car. I have no idea how long it's been neglected, but you can tell that this filter needed a wash and a really good cleaning if I were to have reused it and re-oiled it compared to what's been in the car. This filter, this is the first check in about three months for this car, and this filter has been washed before after it went down into the desert and air dried. So remember, low pressure water, just a hose or your sink, no attachments, no garden hose attachments, pressure washers, and air dry for a while. The other thing I recommend is, if this vehicle is your daily driver, this is not for me, have two of these air dry filters, because if you're gonna take one out and when you wash it and you leave it for a couple days for it to dry, you're gonna need another one to go with. So you should have two if it's your daily driver. This filter does not need to be washed. There's just a couple of leaves that have accumulated in there. Now I'm just going to use my finger to, to slightly open these and I'm going to use just a toothpick to throw them out. I'm not going to dig into the material with the toothpick. And then this filter will go right back in the car. Place filter back in in the proper orientation. I'm going to repeat it again. If you're using a OEM Audi filter, it's going to have a different part of the filter. So when you take your old one out, be very focused to see if that was on the top or the bottom when you go to put it back. Replace air box, guiding in the bottom tabs first, and then aligning the holes and fastening the self-tapping Phillips screws on the top, the two. Re-enter flimsy coolant line. For those of you that have watched the carbon clean videos, you will remember this. This line is that flimsy coolant line, which curls around the back of the firewall there. Be very careful when you go to reinstall the box not to break this. This air box is another one of those Audi cases of one time it takes you 15 seconds, one time it takes you a couple minutes. Getting this air box in, okay, without damaging the coolant line, minding it, the vacuum line, the lines at the top, and having the ability to hold the flex tube out of the way as you slide those bottom tabs in, takes some care, okay? Those two bottom tabs have to clear things on the back side of the air box over there as well before they'll go in. This coolant pipe, you might have to push it forward just a tad in order to slide it down. So this air box does take great care to get back in without damaging things in the area. 
reattach flex tube and make sure to tighten hose clamp. Make sure your flex tube is seated on the ridge the whole way around. Reinstall two self tapping screws. Plug in MAF sensor and flimsy coolant line back into its metal clip. When reconnecting MAF sensor, make sure to hear an audible click. When it comes to the coolant line, before you enter it, you can pry back the metal tab with a flat headed screwdriver and then as you come to put the coolant line in, you can slowly remove the screwdriver. The screwdriver does not make any contact with the coolant line or you can just use your finger to pry it back a lot so that you can squeeze in the coolant line without damaging the material on the outside. Plug back, air line, listening for click. Re-guide tab for evap line in onto tab for air box. After another moment of one time it takes 10 seconds, one time it takes a couple minutes, this is one of the most basic tasks on any car, but I'm going to go more in depth for you guys and show you something that I saw for the first time this time, is that there are actually two holes here. And what was tricking me up right now was I was trying to align these two holes while these two holes are the actual screw holes. So if you find yourself struggling with this snorkel, remember that you're going to put the screw in the two holes at the front. You will have an easier time reinstalling the snorkel if you reinstall the front part, sliding it in in this fashion, aligning your screw holes, and then gently using the accordion to press the back part into its area. Always double check to remove any tools you may have placed on the tray closest to the firewall before you close the hood in order to prevent damage.